the likelihood that she gained the love of one beloved person in her life, her brother, only to lose another, Jesus. They all knew that things were about to get ugly. It's in that context, already so drenched with that potent mix of emotions, gratitude, grief, hope, wonder, that Mary reached for a costly jar of scented nard, snapped open the top, dropped to her knees, and poured out the entire contents on Jesus' dusty, calloused feet. Now, a Roman pound measures about 12 ounces. So Mary pulled, poured out a full cup and a half of oil, thick as honey, and smelling strongly of something like spiced lavender, until the whole room was filled with that sweet, pungent aroma, filled with the smell of her gratitude perhaps with the smell of her impending grief. This much I love you. This much I thank you. This much I am prepared to give, even knowing where this will all lead. It was a radical act in so many ways. For one thing, women did not typically anoint men other men did that, usually to consecrate the next king. And for another, this little jar of nard was said to cost 300 denarii, something like a full year's wages for a laborer. So Mary's act, it is shockingly intimate, presumptuous, extravagant, breathtaking, jaw-dropping, and faithful. Faithful. After all, hadn't Jesus been that outrageous, that generous, and more so time and time again? Hadn't he surprised his followers with 180 gallons of water turned into wine at a wedding feast? With bread enough to feed 5,000 people on the banks of the Sea of Galilee? With acts of healing that changed the entire course of people's lives? And after his resurrection, the risen Christ would meet Simon Peter, instruct him, to put his fishing net down on the other side of the boat. And Simon would come up with a net overflowing with sun-kissed fish after an entire night of catching nothing. That was Jesus' way. Because it is also God's way. Extravagant generosity at every turn. And so, mirroring her Lord's own heart, Mary poured out that oil and did not count the cost. Now, it has occurred to me to wonder whether Mary acquired that oil after Jesus raised her brother from the dead, a thank you gift worthy of this most amazing act, or whether the perfumed ointment had been in her possession all along. A treasure that she kept tucked away somewhere for a special occasion. My parents, they have a cupboard that is filled with jars, jars of jam and sauces and other treats mostly given to them by us as gifts over the years. A jar of <laughs> rhubarb ginger jam at Christmas an exotic mustard for my father's birthday, chocolate cherry sauce to pour over ice cream. And one day I opened the cupboard and found that whole assortment. When are you going to open these, I asked. Well, Mom said, we were waiting for a special occasion. 
a special occasion, a day worthy of the gift. How common is it for us to keep our treasures tucked away like that? After all, once you open the jar, eat the jam, use the oil, it's gone. The treasure is all used up. Better to save it. But Mary, she did not hesitate. On that day, a week before Jesus' death, she poured out her whole treasure, used it all in one go, did this as a way of saying to Jesus, you, I treasure even more than this most costly nard. You are worthy of the very best I have to offer. You are worthy of everything I have, by which she meant everything I am. It is a beautiful gesture, but it also leaves me shifting uncomfortably in my seat. By that one act of gratitude and generosity, Mary makes me wonder, provokes me to wonder, am I willing to pour myself out like that and not Count the cost. Are you? What does it even mean to give everything I have, everything I am? The playwright George Bernard Shaw once wrote, I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the community. And as long as I live, it is my privilege to do for it whatever I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die, for the harder I work, the more I live. I want to be thoroughly used up. It is a simultaneously compelling and worrisome image, right? Summoning visions of the jar of oil lovingly emptied out, and also the vision of people who are perpetually exhausted. There is so much good work to do, so much necessary, urgent work poverty to overcome, and people to feed, violence to transform into peaceful dialogue, bigotry to banish, children to educate, diseases to cure. It is easy to conclude that we've got to pour ourselves out, got to give everything we have and then some until we have depleted our resources completely. But then what, sisters and brothers? Then what? Public theologian Billy Connor wrote this week about justice fatigue. Feeling completely wrung out, out of energy, out of words, out of rejoinders in response to the bigoted comments we encounter in the news each day, quote, with all of the intractable issues in our society that seemingly won't get right or can't get right, many justice workers and seekers of all kinds are finding themselves in need of a refreshing well of renewal. Even Jesus needed time to rest, to eat, to pray. Indeed, it's what he's doing here, regrouping, preparing for that final act. Remember, this scene propels us right into the passion narrative. Once Jesus leaves this house, there will be no going back. But for now, for these few hours, Jesus rests in the company of friends, and they who have been ministered to by Jesus now minister to him. I think, I 
think that this is the bit that Judas Iscariot fails to comprehend. That one extravagant act of gratitude and generosity makes all the rest possible. The feeding and the healing, the serving and the marching, the confronting those dehumanizing forces that would deplete and deny us at every turn. Tomorrow, Jesus will walk out onto the Jerusalem road, still smelling of that sweet perfume. He will climb onto a donkey and turn his face toward the gates of the city, knowing that he will be arrested there and finally put to death. And as the cheers of the crowd ring in his ears, he will take a deep breath. Smell that spiced lavender. Remember the blessing bestowed on him by Mary. Later, as he stands before the high priest Caiaphas, the aroma may yet cling to him. And when Pilate has him flogged, the scent of Mary's perfume may mingle with the sharp scent of sweat and blood. Perhaps it will linger even as the soldiers lead him away to Golgotha. Perhaps that scent will give him courage. If Jesus needs courage and really, don't we all? Surely it will remind him that there is beauty and power in pouring yourself out, in giving everything you have, not until it depletes you, but until it fills you up with wonder, with gratitude, with love. Because then, then, anything is possible. Rivers in the desert, tyrants defeated, maybe even a resurrection. Tell me, sisters and brothers in Christ, how is your spirit this Lenten season? Do you find yourselves wrung out? Or like Lazarus unexpectedly given new life, are you wondering what to do next? Here is my prayer for you this season, that you might discover or rediscover that you are treasured by God, yeah. that somewhere along the way you might experience God's love poured out on you like sweet-smelling oil that's so anointed so overcome by wonder and gratitude, you might find yourself inspired to unpack all your own treasures, to pull out all the stops, to pour out all you have for justice, for mercy, and for the love of God. And so, friends, May God's whole precious world be blessed. Amen.